Greetings to you all in the powerful and mighty name of God. As a child, I had witnessed big cranes remove the mud from the deep wells. This was done on a regular basis once in a year during the end of the summer and the beginning of the rainy season. I used to wonder why they dug the already deep dug wells. Later, I understood that every time they removed the mud from the wells, the wells get, used to get filled with fresh water. In other words, the new water used to gush forth from beneath and fill the whole well and the water used to be so fresh. Yes, my dear, beloved of God, Lent is an occasion to remove the mud from our hearts, sin from our hearts and fill us with fresh living water. As Jesus told Samaritan women, if you knew who is talking to you and you would ask him and he would give you the living water. Lent is such a beautiful season to encounter and to talk to Jesus and to know who is talking to you so that we experience the living water flowing in our hearts, cleansing our hearts and to be filled with the spiritual grace. As we're going to begin the Lent from tomorrow, let us know how this season of Lent has come into existence. During the apostolic times, the practice was not formalized until 325. Initially, it was a time of preparation for candidates for baptism and a time of penance for grievous sinners who were excluded from communion and were preparing for their restoration into the community. As a sign of the penitence, people wore sackcloth and were sprinkled with ashes. After 9th century, it became a customary for all the faithful to be reminded of the need for penitence by receiving an imposition of ashes on their foreheads on the first day of Lent. Hence, the name derives as Ash Wednesday. Lent is not just giving up something which we are more dear to us. Rather, it is all about how I take advantage of the spiritual opportunities available to us during this liturgical season. The Catechism of the Catholic Church helps us to understand and tap the spiritual, spiritual opportunities available to us at our disposal during this holy season of Lent. Catechism of the Catholic Church proposes and tells us and guides us to pray. My dear beloved of God, Lent is a time to pray and to intensify our prayer life. This could mean also dedicating oneself to prayer for a set of time each day, making an effort to read the scripture or spending an hour each week before the blessed sacrament. Look at what you currently do and increase it a little bit. And the second, the spiritual exercise that the Catholic Church, Catechism of the Catholic Church proposes is to go on a retreat. Lent is an idle time to get away from the normal routines of life for a few days and attend a spiritual retreat. If not, a week or a half day retreats or parish missions or which are preached in the parishes or even idle moments to unite oneself to Christ alone in the desert. And the third spiritual exercise that the church proposes is to go for confession, which has become a rarity in these days. My dear beloved of God, retreats are a good opportunity to examine our lives and make good confessions and cleanse our souls and to experience that living water within all of us. If you can't attend a retreat, take a half a day or maybe a few minutes or few hearts to go over a through examination of conscience. Try to make a good confession afterwards. And the other spiritual exercise which the church proposes is to make a pilgrimage. It is a time to go on a pilgrimage within the territory 
of the Archdiocese of Hyderabad. There are several holy places one could visit alone or as a family or as a parish community that could serve as a destination for half a day or a day-long pilgrimage. Our Archbishop, Pula Antony, has announced to make pilgrimage to St. Joseph's Cathedral and Foundry as this year being a year of St. Joseph and obtain plenary indulgence. Or you can visit any shrine, like Infant Jesus Shrine, which is at Mjala, St. Anthony Shrine, Metaguda, or St. Jude Shrine, Vikarabad, or any place which is of your choice to experience and tap this spiritual grace. Another, which is a famous practice that we all do, and the church proposes is fasting. Fasting should be done within the context of prayer, repentance and almsgiving. Fasting without these elements is simply exercising a will power. Therefore, my dear beloved of God, your fasting should be with prayer, repentance and almsgiving, which will bear an immense fruit in your spiritual journey. And the other spiritual exercise that the Catholic Church proposes us is to extend our arms or give arms to the poor, which is an essential duty of every Christian during the Lent. And we are called to intensify this practice. You know, we can also sponsor a meal to one of the spiritual convention in your parish or to Catholic charities or to a food banks or another charity of your choice. We often forget that giving alms can also include giving to a friend, a family member or a neighbor or a beggar who is in need. And lastly, the church proposes us to give ourselves or to give yourself. At the end of the list of the penitential practices, the Catechism Church, the Catechism of the Catholic Church includes and tells us to do charitable and missionary works. These are the works of service to the poor or to your neighbor. The obvious suggestion includes volunteering at a shelter run by Catholic charities or your own parish priest or other charitable works. My dear beloved of God, as the church proposes these practices to experience the grace of God, experience the living water within us, let us try to journey in the will from the wilderness to the foot of the cross. Let, let these 40 days of grace period which is given by the Catholic Church to us may be utilized in full. God blesses all and have a wonderful day.